Hi guys. Are we, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies have been terrible all day today, so I'm going to have to apologize in advance. There may be a little bit of, uh, you know, that kind of thing going on tonight. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're getting ready to start another work week. That part, that's not so much fun. But before we do start another work week, we are going to have some fun tonight. So we're going to open a football jersey, a case of autographed baseballs, a half case of Prime Signatures football from 2011, and then a half case of uh, Bowman baseball. Before we get started ripping into packs, we do have a little info to go over, so let's take a look at the first of that now. First and foremost, thanks to everyone. I appreciate everybody who bids and breaks with me, and those of you who chat with me, keep me company, and all that kind of stuff. Secondly, my feedback is completely automated on eBay. So what that means to you is you never have to wait on me to get caught up. Because I never seem to get caught up on anything. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry again. But yeah, so as soon as you post uh, positive feedback for me, you should instantly get it in return. That's the, that's the takeaway point from that. Next up on the screen, you'll see our upcoming breaks. This is stuff that is scheduled over the course of the next five days. New listings go up just about every night, and they do typically last for five days. So tomorrow night, you'll see we're going to do a full-size uh, football helmet, autographed football helmet. We're going to do some more score football. On Tuesday, we've got a lot of baseball, some 2012 signature series, another case of these autographed balls, uh, one of the triple play boxes, which has an autographed jersey, an autographed ball, and an autographed photo in it. <clears throat> then some more Bowman baseball. <clears throat> guys, I am really sorry. I don't know. My voice is kind of starting to go or something. So whatever this allergy thing is, it's just blah. Been this way all day. Uh, Wednesday, of course, we've got some one box breaks and a uh, mini football helmet and the rest of the score. On Thursday, we'll do another case of autographed baseballs and some more Bowman. Friday, we'll do another autographed football jersey, some more prime signatures, and hey, hey, National Treasures basketball that comes out on Friday. So that is what the days ahead look like <clears throat> for tonight. A couple of things you need to know. First off, if you are in one of these first three breaks that has completely free shipping, that stuff goes out once every six to seven days after the auction ends. Sometimes it goes sooner. If you have another package going, it may hit your ride and go out early. Otherwise, uh, I'm anticipating a Saturday shipping date. That's for the autographed jersey, the prime signatures, and the autographed baseballs. Our paid shipping break tonight, that is Bowman Baseball. I've got up there Thursday. I think I can get it out to you sooner than that, but to be on the safe side, we're going to leave it on Thursday, and if I can get it out to you sooner, which I hope and think that I can, then so much the better. Uh, so that's what we're looking at there. This is also the order that we're breaking in tonight. And finally, there's a note up there. If your team is not pulled in one of these breaks, you are still entitled to a consolation trading card for that team. It can be from any year, any series. It will typically ship with your next package that has a hit in it. If you want it shipped sooner, drop me a note on eBay. Let me know. We'll get it taken care of. So first up, a 2018 TriStar Game Day Greats Autograph Football Jersey. These just came out the other day. And this is our first time digging into one, breaking into one. And, of course, uh, it ended tonight, Sunday. Did I say the 28th? Isn't today the 29th? It is. Look at that. I made a big old typo right there at the top. And you know it's going to be that way the whole way through, right? Yeah, it is. Now what I do? It's going to say Sunday the 28th the whole way through because I cut and pasted that part. Tag on it. All right. Well, you know what? Let's just fix that real quick. I know, I know. I should have caught that before now, but hey, I didn't. I messed it up. Now I'm fixing it. And yeah, well, that's just to make sure for reference, you know, if we're looking at it later, we know what in the heck's going on. There, that's a little better. So it ended tonight, the 29th of April, and we're live streaming it tonight as well, Sunday night, the 29th of April. And, of course, you see team names on the left, winning bidders across from it. There's one team that didn't sell. That's the Ravens, and it is noted as no bids buyback. And, of course, if you're in one of the other breaks, you will get a chance to see your name up there when we get to your break. 
finally there you notice the background went out of focus not to worry that is by design we're still going to be able to see everything still going to all be good hey hey jupiter sailfish i haven't seen you forever it has been oh my gosh how many months since i last saw you in chat how you doing and Tacoma09 says he has a, he or she has a good feeling about tonight. And Efi North Dakota says you were just in another game day greats uh, jersey break and there are some good legends. There certainly are. And you know who else is in here in this series? Saquon Barkley. Yeah, he is. He's in here. So for the Giants, you're going to have another little shot. This is Jackie Slater, and it appears that this is the St. Louis Rams. And there, of course, I don't take these out of these bags most of the time because it's like a map. Once you take it out, you can never get it back in folded the same way. So there's the Jackie Slater signature along with the JSA authentication sticker. There is a JSA authentication card in there, and I will also put this little... Uh, informational card that comes with it will go in there too so there is our hit it is for the rams with the jackie slater hi ryan superfly how are you you said you wanted to get every every item tonight <laughs> yeah i understand how you feel i look at some of those days myself and try to build <laughs> bid on a bunch of stuff myself and Mac Monster, um, it was not a Falcons jersey tonight, I'm afraid. It was a Rams jersey. I'm sorry about that, man. It's, it's not fun when you don't hit, but when you do hit, it's kind of awesome. So sometimes we just have to suffer through a few where we don't hit and hopefully eventually get to one where you do. Next up is going to be the half case of 2011 Prime Signatures Football Half Case. And once again, if you are in this break, please take a moment to review the information there on the screen. Talks about what happens if your team is not pulled. That's all this info up here. And your anticipated shipping date uh, is Saturday. And yeah, of course, we went over that in more detail earlier. But that's going to go up there before we start each break. Because people do, you know, kind of jump in and out and stuff. So this is break number 67 on our 2011 Prime Signatures. It's gonna be five box, half case break. And same format as before with our team names uh, on the left and our winning bidders across from it. This is the start of a new case. So, here's what that means. It means we're gonna take all the boxes out because this is how I do it when we're starting a new case and we're not opening the full case in one setting. I'm going to take them all out. I will number each of them on the end, and then we will use random.org to determine for us which ones we open tonight versus which ones will be opened in our next break of this product. All right. So, I don't, why, did, I don't, why are they... <laughs> I should have just stacked them like that to begin with. Yeah, that's easier. I don't know why I spread them all out. I get crazy sometimes. All right, so I will, uh, as soon as we get these numbered, I'll take you along with me. We'll roll over to random.org. I will just simply type in 1 through 10. I will hit random one time, and whatever the first five numbers that come up will be the five boxes that we're going to open up tonight. This is also going to be a brand new case of Bowman when we get to it. So we'll do the same exact thing for Bowman when we start that case. So there's our 1 through 10. It gives us 2, 10, 4, 7, and 5. 2, 4, 5, 7, 10. 2, 4, 5, 7, 10. i got to remember that myself. All right. There's the 2, 4, 5, and 7, and 10. Okay. So there's our five boxes for tonight. Let me get these other five put back in their case. <clears throat> and let's see what we can find tonight in Prime Sigs. 
Oh, you're in Bowman tonight, Jupiter. Awesome. What team do you have? Or teams. I guess it could be more than one, huh? If you haven't done a break with this before, 2011 Prime Signatures, it is one pack per box, and then there is one hit per pack. That's just a checklist. And we may find redemptions in here. If we do find redemptions, they're going to say that they're expired, because technically they are expired. However, you still want to redeem them. You put them in your Panini account, just like you would put in an unexpired redemption. If they still have the card, which they do still have some of this older stuff, typically they're going to send it to you within a couple of months on the uh, older ones like this. If you haven't gotten anything from them in a couple of months, it's pretty safe to assume they don't still have it. At that point, if you can track down an actual breathing human being, they will substitute it for you. The hard part is finding the actual person. They don't answer the phone. They don't answer their emails. They give you an email and tell you to email them about those sorts of things, but then they never, ever answer them. So I don't even know really why they give one out. So I recommend social media. That's what everybody responds to, it seems like, these days. So try and track them down using Twitter or Facebook or something like that. And eventually, you'll usually find somebody who can help you. And what they do when they trade them out, they'll ask you who your favorite teams are, who your favorite players are, that sort of thing. And then they trade them out like value. So, you know, if your card was going to be worth $5 and you tell them your favorite player is Ezekiel Elliott, you know, they're probably not going to send you one of his cards, but <laughs> they will send you, you know, something of comparable value from a team or a player that you like. Everything in 2011 Prime Signatures is numbered, even our base cards. We're starting off with the Dolphins to $4.99 with Mark Duper, Reggie Wayne to $4.99 Colts, Billy Houghton $4.99 for the Packers, and there's one already, the dreaded redemption. We're going to set it over there. We'll go look it up in a bit. Donald Driver to $4.99 Packers. Deion Sanders, $4.99 Falcons. There's Mark again to $99 for the Dolphins. And our hit, first hit that we have live in our hands tonight happens to be for the Ravens. To get a little sleeve out here. That one is a sticker auto and it is numbered to 199. So basically, if the rookies were at the rookie premiere day, they'll be on card autos in this set. If they were not, they will be sticker autos. To 499 for the Chiefs, little Charlie Joyner to 499 for the Chargers, Joe Namath to 49 for the Jets, and we have a hit for the Jags with Cecil Cecil blah 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 blah, blah. Cecil <laughs> Shorts the third to 199 for the Jags. That is also a sticker auto. Then we have Otis Anderson to 499 Giants, Michael Vick 499 Eagles, Chad Ochocinco to what is that 49 I guess for the Patriots, and our hit is for the Texans. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think this is the team that someone has that they haven't had very good luck, and they're like, ah, oh, gosh, I've had like three times I haven't had any hits. I think they have the Texans tonight if I remember right. Ben Tate to 75, also a sticker auto. And Quan Bolden, $4.99 Ravens. Randy Moss, $4.99 Vikings. Jared Mayo to $49 for the Patriots. And Mason Foster to $49 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sticker auto. So, we got one still to deal with. That's this bad boy here. Our card set is Rookie Signature Silver. It is card number 209. And I'm going to bring you along with me. We're going to roll over here to the Panini website and track this down and see who this is and uh, what it's numbered to, if it's numbered. I love that they have all their checklists on here, like all the way back, I think, to 2009. It's pretty far back. I did say Rookie Signature Silver, didn't I? I think I did. Card 209. 
Looks like it is for the Redskins. It is Roy Halu, Halu, something like that. Uh, numbered to 199 for the Washington Redskins. All right. So let's get that all labeled up. Then we're going to recap our um, hits here. And then we'll be moving into our baseball breaks. Okay, redemption for the Redskins to 199. Mason Foster to 49 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ben Tate, 75 for the Texans. Cecil Shorts, the third to 199 for the Jags. And Anthony Allen to 199 for the Ravens. So 2011 Prime Signatures is locked and loaded and in the books. And for those of you who might be taking off now, my football people, if you're not sticking around for baseball, uh, once again, thank you. I appreciate very much you uh, coming and hanging out tonight and bidding with me and breaking with me. So hopefully we'll see you again in the days ahead. Meanwhile, baseball folks, we're just getting started tonight on the baseball. Once again, if you are in this upcoming break for the Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs, please take a moment to review the information you see there in regard to your anticipated shipping date, as well as the information about consolation cards if your team is not pulled in this break. So this is three, there will be three autograph baseballs in this case. It is 18, 2018 Onyx Preferred Players. You're going to notice, of course, that lots of things in here say not listed, no hits. That's because those teams were not on the checklist as being a possibility, so I didn't list them for sale. And, uh, yeah, we don't, I don't ever like to list anything if we don't think there's any possibility to pull a hit for it. So, as a matter of fact, I left the checklist in the other room. Hang on one second. I'm going to grab it. I'll be right back. I wrote all over it, of course, but it might still be handy to have. <laughs> so if you did not look at the checklist for this yet, well, you really should. I think I have it there on the, on the listing. Pretty sure I do. But it is loaded up, man. I mean, Trout is in here. Judge is in here. Otani's in here. Uh, not to mention lots of our up-and-coming players like Brendan Rodgers and Ahmed Rosario and Ronald Acuna and all those guys just does not want to come out of here. My goodness. All right, let's just open. <laughs> let's open both ends. Maybe I can get them to come out the opposite end. Or maybe I can use the opposite end to push through. I don't know. Good grief. They are very snugly in this case. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, there we go. That's the way to go. <laughs> They did not make that easy, did they? Joe says he is feeling it for the Indians and the Yankees. I just hope, uh, I mean, I started to say I hope we pull somebody good, but honestly, the checklist is just awesome this year. I mean, Clayton Kershaw is in there. Uh, there, Bradley Zimmer, Carlos Correa. It's just an excellent, excellent checklist this year. Ozzy's in there. Ozzy Albies is in there. All right, so let's get it out of here. Come on out of here, brother. It, they get caught up in the lining of those little bags they come in. I'm going to guess that that's probably Brendan Rogers, but we're gonna. this is going to tell us, of course, here in a hot second. But I always like to look and guess. And am I right? Yes, I am. All right. So there is your Onyx Certificate of Authenticity showing that it is Brendan Rogers. Here's another little certificate uh, thing that has a number on it, which should match, and it does right there, the little Onyx sticker as well. So Brendan Rogers is first out, and let's see who else we've got. Let me put that back in the... Let's sit Brendan over here. That's for the Rockies, of course, if somebody doesn't know that. I'd say most people probably do, but in case you don't, Brendan Rogers is the Rockies. And this one, did they tie? They tied this little bag. Oh, sneaky. 
Sneaky, tying them up. And, oh, brother, you guys as good as mine on that one. I don't even know which, I'm going to assume that's the correct. <laughs> assume that's the upside of it that it's i don't know maybe let's see who this is this is renato nunez and isn't he is he oakland a's i think he is let me better double check that though i might be speaking out of turn on that where is he in here yeah he is the oakland a's okay cool so there again is his paper certificate another certificate and then there's, of course, the uh, little sticker that matches it. And one of those is the right side up. Probably that way is the Renato Nunez for the Oakland A's. Oh, Bryce, that was a good guess. I just now looked over there and saw you. You, had, uh, you were thinking maybe that was uh, Poppy. Yeah, some of the signatures are challenging obviously that one i would have never ever figured out if they hadn't <laughs> had it on the paper but i do like to kind of try and guess sometimes i get them right this has a couple of different things on it i know that already because there's a jsa sticker as well as our regular onyx sticker so maybe this is a big one and is that oh i don't know i was gonna say ronald acuna but that doesn't look right so reese hoskins maybe who is that who, who is this one? Let's see. Something with an R. And it is, oh, it's Robert Gelman for uh, the Mets. How about that? All I got was the R. I was way wrong. <laughs> There's our Onyx certificate. And then a second certificate is the uh, JSA. Both of those, of course, match the stickers that we already looked at a moment ago. All right, so we have the Gelman here for the Mets. And then, I've already forgotten who the second one was. Oh, Nunez, that's right. Renato Nunez uh, was the other one for the A's, was the second one. Then our first original one that came out was Brendan Rogers. All right, so that has this case of Onyx baseballs all locked up. We've got several of those to do, though. I bought several cases of it. Actually, my distributor kind of messed me over and didn't turn my order in, even though I pre-ordered it. So I didn't get any of the ones I was supposed to get, but I managed to round up an equivalent number from other places. I just had to pay more, that's all. <laughs> like a lot more. Yeah, like, um... Oh, gosh, it was probably, what, like $100 a case more or something? It was like a whole lot more, but I wanted them, and I was kind of mad that they messed up and didn't turn my order in, but, ah, well, water under the bridge. So, moving on, we're heading into some Bowman baseball. And, of course, this one, again, is a page shipping break. I'm, I have on the screen Thursday. I believe I can get it out to you faster than that. I feel pretty confident that I can, but nonetheless, we're going to leave it saying Thursday, and hopefully it will go sooner. Of course, you don't have to worry about consolation cards in this break. There's a zillion cards in there, and every team's going to pull some. This will be the start of a new case. It is six boxes of 2018 Bowman Baseball, a half case. It is break number three, and as before, we have team names on one side, and winning bidders across from it on the opposite. Since this is a new case, all 12 boxes are going to come out. We'll number them. I will number them on the end. And then uh, we'll roll over to... Uh-oh, did I pull up the jumbos? Uh-oh, I brought up the wrong case, I think. <laughs> Hang on. I think I carried the wrong case uh, up here. One second. good for me. I get my exercise, right? So yeah, I had the wrong, <laughs> the entirely wrong case of product setting up here. That would not have been good. Or is this, wait a minute. 
Oh, dang it. This is the wrong one. I mean, I had the right one to begin with. Or did I just get the wrong one twice? What in the heck? I just cut this one open and it's wrong. It's not the right one either. Ah! <clears throat> okay, third time has got to be the charm. <laughs> Man alive. I wish Tops would just print the dang product name on the outside of the... Oh, that box is a little dinged up on the corner. On the outside of the case. It would certainly make life easier. Alrighty. Now that I got my exercise for the evening, same as before, numbering, numbering everything on the end, punching in uh, 1 through 12 into random, and that will then tell us which ones we're going to open tonight and which ones we're going to open in the next break. getting there. Well, that is supposed to be 11, not 112. Let's try that again. All right, so there are our 1 through 12 is now typed in, and it gives us 2, 1, 12, four, eight, and six. So one, two, four, six, eight, twelve. One, two, four, six, eight, twelve. All right. One, two, four. Six and eight. And there's twelve. All right. So there are our six. Give me a hot second to get these other six put back in the case. gonna rock and roll okay so there is of course a lot of cards in this break so we kind of uh, we kind of rock through most of these the base cards and things I don't really spend an inordinate amount of time on them of course we spend a little longer when we're looking at numbered cards, and our hit, which will be one autograph card per box. But otherwise, I kind of get moving on through these. And if you find that it's too fast and you, you want me to go slower, jump in there and tell me. I'll be happy to accommodate that request. Speaking of, if you're watching live and you can't see chat, and you would like to see or participate in chat, you need to A, be logged into YouTube, and B, if you're watching on a mobile device like your phone or your tablet, you also have to click on that little link that says you want to view the desktop version. There are, <clears throat> of course, paper cards in here and chrome cards. There are also loads of inserts. This is an example of one of our inserts. It is Bowman Scouts Top 100. We will find uh, quite a few of those as we go along. And of course, uh, loads and loads of our Chrome cards in here as well. Bowman Birthdays is another insert set that we'll find quite frequently. All of the Bowman Birthdays are refractors. So anytime you see one of those, you know it's going to be a refractor another Bowman Scout 100.
Nick Sendel hurt his shoulder the other day, yesterday, in the game. Did you guys see that? It looked awful, but they say there's no structural damage, so that was made me happy. Bowman trending uh, another insert series that we'll find throughout, and those, again, will all be refractors. That one, of course, was uh, A.J. Puck for the Oakland A's. Rookie of the Year favorites, again, all will refract in that insert set. That one, Willie Calhoun. And most of those inserts, I will put them in a sleeve before uh, they go out the door to you. I just thought in the interest of keeping things moving tonight, I'm kind of setting them aside. And then at the end of the break, I will do all that. And you won't have to wait for me to do it as we go through. Which is typically what I would do, but I know there's a lot of cards in here tonight, so try to keep the pace moving along. So you're not up till midnight on a work night or a school night, as the case may be. Fernando Romero for the Twins on that insert. Bowman Scouts Top 100. Tell you what the paper cards have a nasty tendency to want to stick to the back of the chrome cards a talent pipeline again we'll find uh, quite a few of these and they will also all be refractors that one of course was the cleveland indians yeah i tried to get in some bowman breaks today and get the Reds, but man, I keep getting outbid. I can't get my Cincinnati Reds because Hunter Green, you know, everyone is after my Reds for a change. <laughs> so it is challenging. I can't get them. Most everything in here is an on-card auto. The exception, like this, is when we find an autograph on an insert card. So this is a sticker auto because it's on the Bowman Scouts Top 100 insert, uh, but it's Barreto for the Oakland A's. So that's our signature hit out of uh, box number one. After we break uh, the cases that I have of what we're doing now, the Bowman Hobby, I do have some Bowman Jumbo. And I'm kind of thinking about, you guys give me some feedback on this because you're the, you're the ones who ultimately will help me make the decision. But I'm considering with the jumbos not shipping the base. And if we did it that way without sending the paper base, you know, I would still send the chrome and all the inserts and anything numbered, but just otherwise none of the paper base. But if we did that, I could break the whole case of jumbos as one break. I mean, it would be a long break, but we could do it. So, I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you guys want all that paper base? And in which case, we'd keep going in half case breaks uh, on the jumbo. Or do you not care that much about the paper base? In which case, we would then probably break the jumbo as a full case all in one sitting. It would still take a while, but it's more, um, I tried to set that over with the inserts, but it's much more feasible to do it that way than to try to ship if every single card went out the door. Jupiter says the Reds minor league team plays in your town this week. You got a couple of Bowman cards you're going to try to get signed. Oh, awesome. You'll have to come in and let me know if you get, if it, uh, works if you get them signed which one's coming there double a tri triple a single a who's coming to town bryce i guess i could do a separate listing for all of the paper cards i mean that's not outside the realm of possibility it would be oh my goodness <laughs> it would probably be 20 pounds of cards like no kidding it would probably be 20 pounds cards there's a lot of them
Justin, you say you like that idea. You like the idea of the paper cards being their own category, like doing the whole case and all the base paper goes in one bidding category, or you mean you just like the idea of breaking it as a whole case and you don't care whether you get the base paper or not. I'm not sure which one you're saying there. There's an Otani, just a base, uh, base in there, of course, but we're going to try and conjure up a hit because that would be pretty awesome. We all know it would be. You're bringing tons of money still. Of course, I'm afraid to quote an amount these days after the, <laughs> the other night when I had bookmarked an auction. I had looked at it. It was up over 30, it's like $37,000 for one of the Atomic Chrome autograph to 100 of uh, Shohei. And then somebody said, well, they couldn't find it. I didn't know what happened to it. Yeah, all those auctions got ended. Apparently, they started the auction before the official release date of the product. Michael Mercado for the raise to 499 And so Bowman apparently complained. This is what someone else told me, that Bowman complained about it and made eBay uh, end all those listings that had started before the official release date of the product. So all those people, their cards were up to $37,000, all had their auctions ended. That is a Chris Bryant Bowman Sterling continuity card. Uh, it is also a refractor. Fetty numbered to 499 for the Nationals. Oh, yeah, Bryce, you're just saying now this is yeah, exactly what I was just talking about, that um, I forgot who came in and told me that the other night. Oh, shoot, I know, and it's just gone right out of my head. I don't know. It's someone who bids with me often, and he, he came in and said that his, uh, came in to chat the following night and said his hobby uh, store owner had been talking about it and said that that's the reason that what happened. Oh, Justin, you're saying you like the idea of uh, the whole case without the paper at all. And then somebody else is saying they want to, they like the idea of having the base. So it's kind of a 50-50. I would not do the whole case if we did, if I had to ship the base, because it's an incredible amount of cards. There is a nice little shimmer for the White Sox, numbered to 125 with Louis Robert. I guess, too, if I did the, if we did all the paper as its own category, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, because Bryce, or, or whoever, I think it was Bryce, said a minute ago that the paper could be its own bidding category. But if it were its own bidding category, then I think we would have to include the numbered stuff in there, too. We would literally pull out just the chrome which is all, mm, all the inserts, but then all the paper base, including the numbered stuff, would go to that bidding category. Stuart, for the Detroit Tigers, our atomic refractor from this box. So I'm just kind of thinking through the possible ways that that could flow. Superfly, so I love to say Superfly. That's my favorite part of your username. You know that. I say that every time, but it, it really does just make me smile every time. <laughs> you said that you like the base, um, but, well, yeah, I can't really do the, I can't really do the base off camera, though, because, you know, when you break it, it's got to all be on camera. I mean, so the base would be on camera regardless. So the sorting, as you say, is always done off camera after the fact. But the idea is, well, A, shipping would be unbelievable. I mean, everything would be a tremendous amount of cards. But secondly, the sorting would be hours upon hours versus if you're just setting aside, say, the, the hits, the numbered stuff in the chrome.
Yeah, I, I know what you're saying about, you know, send out the base only to the people who want it. But here's the thing. For me to do that, I would still have to sort the entire thing. Because if I didn't sort the entire thing, I wouldn't be able to know which ones went to the teams of people who requested it. Does that make sense? So yeah, if you've got to sort for one team, then you've kind of got to sort for all the teams. Is uh, Why do I keep doing that? Every time I see the insert, I try to take the card in front of it to set in my other stack over there that's pending sleeves at the end of the break. Rizzo for the Cubbies is numbered to 250. Kiana, do I, is that how you say your name? Kiana or is it Kiana? Kiana or Kiana? One of probably probably neither one. We all know I'm terrible with the names, um, and I apologize if I just butchered your name entirely. <laughs> But you're saying you like getting the base, which absolutely, I mean, that's why I've, I've been sending the base out with all of, most of my breaks I send the base out on. But I was just thinking, you know, by the time we've done three, four, five cases of regular Bowman, that probably most people would have all the base. That is a Mateo uh, Bowman Sterling continuity insert, which is why I thought when we got to the jumbo, that maybe there wouldn't be as much need to send out the base. But it sounds like there are a lot of people that are interested in it. And if that's the case, then we may just end up doing some of each. Maybe we'll do some as half cases and ship it all. And maybe we'll do some as whole cases and only uh, ship part of it. Greg Deichman, the A's so far have both of our hits. Both of our autograph hits anyway. So the A's are on a little bit of a roll tonight. Juan Soto is our atomic refractor for the Nationals. Well, that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a that is a valid point, Jupiter. Um, the Otani base, which I hadn't even considered. Yeah, those are selling for maybe five ten dollars piece right now. So that might uh, present an issue as well. Hadn't thought about that. In general, I find that there are somewhere around four to six in a half case of Otani paper base. At least that's what I found up to this point. Of course, that can always vary, but that seems to be about on average. Bryce, you said you've been seeing one base Otani per jumbo, so that would be about eight in a case of that. That seems like that would be light, but maybe, maybe so. I don't know. Here's another, here's another one here, as a matter of fact. While we're talking about it, we may as well set him off to the side there. I mean, I guess, I guess that's about right, because we're, yeah, that's probably about right. We're not finding one per box here. It's one per every few. What is happening right there? That is some kind of a, I don't know what that is. That's weird. Hmm, I don't know. Whatever that was, it's all, it came off. It was a little piece of something. St. Louis Cardinals Talent Pipeline. Piece of card or something, I guess. Yeah, I did not think about that because usually the paper base is no big deal, but with Otani in here, it kind of becomes one. Detroit Tigers talent pipeline. Oh, we have a little gold coming up here for the Blue Jays numbered 250 how would you say his name Zeus I don't know Zeus Zeish <laughs> I have no idea I have no idea how to say his name let's face it I mess up the easy names I certainly am not going to get that right
Oh, it's actually Dave. Okay, so you're just using probably like your wife's account or your girlfriend's account or something. So <laughs> I, I was calling you the wrong name entirely. All right, Dave. <laughs> that is easier for me to do. I can actually pronounce that one without butchering it. Oh, and you're saying, Dave, some of the other base has been bringing good money as well. Honestly, I very seldom pay attention to the individual card prices of things because I very seldom sell my cards. Um, and I really kind of stick with my poor little Cincinnati Reds. Who actually won today, though, right? Like, I didn't see the game, but I think I saw the score pop up that we actually won. That's to 250 for the Giants. Steven Dugar. We have been so, so bad this year. I don't even really watch much anymore. It's like, oh, it's a bloodbath. Bader, Rookie of the Year favorites. I really don't even, I just don't like selling individual cards, primarily because I don't like scanning them. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of scanning them in, and I don't think they ever really photograph particularly well. And then if you miss something, then somebody has issues, and that causes a whole other world of hurt. And, you know, I don't know, I just <laughs> don't list very many well, ever. I don't just haven't been listing individual cards. I need to send some off and have them graded because I have a lot. And I do want to sell some, but I, as I said, don't want to go through all that process. So, and they're so backed up. Grading, I mean, my goodness. I would not send anything to Beckett unless they've made significant progress. They have been... Um, well, they were almost a full 12 months behind. I don't know how much they've caught up since then, but they have been really behind, which then, of course, everybody started switching over to PSA DNA, and then PSA DNA got really far behind, and not not as far behind, but they were probably four to five weeks behind. And I don't know where everybody's at right now, but I haven't sent anything off in a while because I would like to have it back in my lifetime. That is a Chrome Refractor to 499 Taylor Clark for the Diamondbacks. Um, yeah, you are absolutely right, Ryan. I mean, it, it is kind of, I mean, it's not really an, I guess it's an efficiency sort of thing, but for me, it wasn't so much, my intent wasn't for it to be more efficient my intent was to be able to break the whole case all at once because it would give you, of course, a lot more opportunity for hits if the whole case broke at once. But with the high, high number of cards that are in the jumbos, it would be difficult to break the full case at once if all the base were also shipping. So the answer is probably going to be that It'll, for the most part, I guess it will probably just stay like we've been doing it in half cases. And if I decide to do a full one, we'll do it towards the end. <laughs> Jupiter says at least, <laughs> at least you're not uh, a Marlins fan like, uh, like Jupiter is. I tell you, you guys do have a little bit of a hard road ahead. I'm not going to lie to you, but... I think your farm system looks like it's in pretty good shape, doesn't it? So I think if you can suffer through, I know you've been suffering through a few years, but I think if you can suffer through uh, a little longer, you're probably going to come out on the other side in pretty good shape. Now, whoops, there was a paper stuck to the back. For my reds, you know, we've got Senzel, of course, and we've got Hunter Green, and those are really the only two that I'm super excited about. 
I mean, we've got other good players, of course, but I don't know. Just the Reds have been in such a weird pattern for several several years. It just seems like if we get anybody that might be worth a darn, we trade them away. <laughs> or let them leave in the free agency or whatever. Except for Joey Votto. Joey's a, Joey sticks with us, goodness knows why, but I don't know what we're doing. It seems like we should have been farther along in the rebuild than we are. So, I don't know what the Reds are doing. Oh, Justin is a Padres fan. You know what? You guys made some nice additions, though, in the off season for San Diego. So, you have... Uh, you've got... And you've got some good, some good up-and-comers in your farm system, too, for the Padres. I think you'll be all right. Yeah, Stanton, uh, I know you hate it. I'm sure you hated to see Giancarlo go. I mean, that's how I will feel when Joey Votto eventually goes. It's just not going to be fun. Vlad for the Blue Jays in our Bowman Sterling continuity card. But you know, uh, Stanton has struggled a little bit at times in New York and I think it's pretty bad that the Yankees fans boo him when he's having a bad time already for whatever reason he just hit a little slump and then the Yankees fans decide to boo him I'm like come on I mean I, there's no sense in that I don't understand sometimes where people at their decision-making process. What point does that serve to boo your own team? Like, do you think, I, it's like they think, oh, they're not trying hard enough or they want to lose, so I'm going to boo them. I mean, that's not the case. They're trying to win. They don't want to lose. Oh, Justin, you think that uh, all of your young talent is going to get traded away at the Padres? You don't think they're going to keep anybody? I mean, I would think they would keep when, because, you know, they're fairly cheap when they're young. So, relatively speaking, comparatively speaking, maybe is the word I should use, I would think they would keep them when they've got favorable contracts for six years or so. I don't know why they would trade them away. That would be silly. But then again, why do the Reds do half the things they do, right? Never know. And like, it did no good to fire the manager early in the season. Well, the manager's not the one out there playing on the field, so you can fire him if you want, but I don't think it makes any darn difference. It's not like they fired him and suddenly the Reds were winning. <laughs> so suddenly they were World Series bound. No, not happening. Not happening. But I guess they figured somebody had to be the scapegoat. But do you guys remember when I was talking? Uh, well, not everybody was on here, so some of you may remember, some of you may not. Uh, but the other night when uh, Acuna hit his first home run was, of course, against the Reds. And I was talking about how empty the place was <laughs> and that the guy who got the ball was just, I mean, practically the only one there for three or four rows in that upper deck and got the ball and whatever. Because you could, you know, of course, the, the uh, replay, because it was his first home run, was everywhere. Well, come to find out a day or so later... Nick Gordon for the Twins, our atomic refractor. A story, an article came out that that guy who got that home run ball had driven up from wherever, I guess Atlanta or Atlanta area. He worked at a card store, like a hobby shop, I think. And he had driven up just for that game to see uh, Acuna play and got his tickets super cheap. And went specifically to the outfield area hoping that maybe he would get a ball. And then, by golly, look what he got. And so he goes 
you know, running off with it. You see him running off with it in the video. And I guess everybody's thought was, oh, he's going to sell it or something. This probably would have gotten ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for it, I would imagine. But he didn't. He somehow went to an usher, went to somebody, and made some kind of a deal where he gave it back to Akuna, but he got to meet him and give it back to him in person or something like that. So it was uh, an interesting little story. But the point of it is to tell you how very empty the Reds ballpark is at any given time. <laughs> it's just insanity. They've been so bad. But for that guy, who drove all night, I think, to get to the game, it certainly did work out well for him. And if you see the picture where he's giving the ball back to Acuna standing next to him, the player just looks like, oh, I, just the look on his face is like, oh, why do I have to do this? <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't look like he wants to be there at all. Speaking of, there he is. But I don't know. He was probably, I would think he would be glad to have the ball back. I mean, your first major league home run eh, is kind of special. It was Kind of cool of the guy, really, to give it back to him. Of course, he kind of negotiated a little, <laughs> negotiated a little something for himself, too. But, hey, I mean, he could have had ten or $15,000 probably if he had sold it on his own. So, I guess at the end of the day, it was more important for him to meet the player. So, have to say that would have been a tough one because yeah even my favorite player if I had gotten a Hank Aaron home run ball at any point in time I don't know that I would have traded it just to go shake hands with Hank Aaron maybe I would have but I don't know I probably would have wanted to keep it I wouldn't have sold it though please don't fail us productions we have already broken the case of autographed baseballs. Oh, you guys are going to have to help me remember. Who do we have? Um, we had Nunez, right? We had Renato Nunez. We had Brendan Rogers. And who was our third one? Who was the third one? Oh, Gelman. Robert Gelman for the Mets. Those were the three. I'm surprised I remembered all three of those. Let's be honest. I usually can't remember that far back. <laughs> after we've looked at this many cards. But yes, that is, that's who came out tonight. Mercado is our autograph uh, out of this box for the Tampa Bay Rays. And that is a pretty nice signature, I have to say. I'm a fan of the penmanship on that one. Oh, Bryce, you typed it in there. Thanks, man. <laughs> you may have, you probably had it typed in there faster than I even was thinking about it and spitting it out loud. I just didn't look over there. <laughs> so thank you for helping him, for helping him uh, out there, Bryce. Ian Anderson, refractor, chrome refractor to 499 for the Braves. There is a little delay, too, just as an FYI, from when you type in chat to when it pops up on my side. There's a slight delay. I had someone help me time it one night, but also sometimes I'm not looking over there at that exact moment. To 25, Garcia for the Cardinals. Well, please don't fail me productions or fail us productions. We're still in the break. So um, I, I definitely don't have the video uh, posted yet because we're still in the midst of the break. But later tonight, there'll be two ways you can watch it. And a few hours after the live break finishes, YouTube has an archived version and that will be available after they process it, like I don't know what they have to do to process it, but whatever it is, it usually takes a couple of hours. And then once that has been done, it will be available to view later this evening. The version that I upload 
will be uploaded tomorrow uh, late afternoon or early evening typically and it will be the same video of course because it's you know the same break but the difference is that I add the title and the tags and all that kind of stuff so that's kind of that's kind of your the deal you have an option of watching it later tonight and the title will just be you know leader of the pack breaks live stream that's how youtube archives it and it will have should have today's date as if we finish before midnight if we finish after midnight it will have tomorrow's date on it instead although i feel pretty sure we'll finish before midnight but just as an fyi Oh, Bryce, that is a good idea. You're saying you would uh, you would give it to the back to the player. Well, actually, Jupiter first said that uh, they would give it back to the player, but then ask the player to sign a different ball or something for them, which I think makes good sense. And then Bryce is kind of saying same thing, except maybe he would ask to get the bat sign that they used to hit it out with or something along those lines. Yeah, I guess it depends. If it were my, like, favorite, favorite player, then yeah, I guess I would probably want to give it back to them. If it were somebody that I liked, but it wasn't my favorite, favorite player in the world, I'd probably keep it. I know that's awful, but I probably would. Unless, like, they ask for it back. <laughs> then I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, here you go. Which sometimes they do, I think. I mean, sometimes the team will send a representative or something to, on behalf of the player, to ask for some of those back. And we find our autograph hit early in this box. For the St. Louis Cardinals, we have Jordan Hicks. Please don't fail us productions. Yes, I've, I've actually answered that question two or three times. Um, <laughs> yes, we have already broken the Onyx baseballs. And it was the same. It's the players that I mentioned a moment ago. It's Renato Nunez for the A's. Followed by Robert Gelman for the Mets. And Brendan Rogers for the Rockies. And uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, you'll be able to watch the archived version on YouTube later this evening and I will upload the version tomorrow. They're the same thing except the one I upload tomorrow will have the proper tags and titles. This is Brendan McKay for the Tampa Bay Rays. This again is our continuity, our Bowman Sterling continuity. This is also an atomic refractor and happens to be numbered to 150. Oh, yeah, I didn't type it, don't fail us. I can't type uh, while I'm breaking because, uh, you know, my hands are tied up here with the cards. So I didn't type it in. I actually verbally answered you um, the other times as well. And I think someone else typed it in up above uh, to help me out there. But I, yeah, I, I can multitask some, but I definitely can't multitask that well. Sorry to say. Scott Kingery to 250 for the Phillies. And Bryce, uh, Bryce says he won the auction for the Braves in Onyx. And I guess please don't fail us thought he had won the auction. I don't know, guys. <laughs> But I, of course, I did put up the spreadsheet there before the start of the break that had everyone's uh, eBay name across from the auctions that they won. And I also, just so you know, I don't ever ship from that. I Hopefully I don't make mistakes when I put that spreadsheet together. Occasionally I do. You know, sometimes we're all going to make mistakes along the way, but I don't ship from that. I always print out the invoices from eBay, that's what I use to do shipping and sorting with. 
but I believe we, I, I think I had it right tonight because I feel like Bryce would have jumped in there and told me if I had someone else's username in his spot tonight. Yeah, please don't fail us. I mean, that certainly you can watch it, but but that is the results. What I what I mentioned earlier. I mean, it is it has already been opened. It is the three players that I that I mentioned. It is Gelman for the Mets, and Nunez for the A's, and Brendan Rogers for the Rockies. Those are the three autograph balls that came out of that break tonight. So that part that part won't change. Alex Verdugo. Rookie of the Year favorites. Now, of course, we've got lots more cases of those that will be opened in the days ahead. But uh, that one tonight is already wrapped up in the books. Well, I did not do a very good job getting that wrapper off of there, did I? Well, let's pose another question. Let's say, okay, Bryce and uh, Jupiter. Let's say you caught a ball that was a milestone ball for maybe a player on the opposing team, not a player that you're a fan of or from your team. But maybe it's you know, somebody's record-breaking home run or something like that. Would you still do the same thing? Would you still give it back to them in exchange for something else autographed? Or would you sell it? I mean, let's assume it was worth $30,000, $40,000. Like a big, groundbreaking kind of ball. Another Otani base. <laughs> Bryce says he would keep it until the Baseball Hall of Fame called and asked for it, <laughs> and then it's negotiable. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would sell it under that circumstance. Like, if it was not a player that I was a personal fan of and they didn't play for my team, and I could get $25,000, $30,000, $40,000, dollars for it, I'm pretty sure I would sell it. Dansby Swanson to four hundred and ninety nine for the Braves, unless again, like I said, if they, you know, came and asked for it, the player themselves or their player's representative came and said, "Hey, he really wants that ball. It means a lot to him," or something like that. Then I, I probably would give it to them. I wouldn't want to, but I would, <laughs> just because that's how I'm. That's how I was raised, so I would. But if they didn't come and ask me, I think I'd sell it in that case. That is a Bowman Sterling continuity for the Kansas City Royals. A Vlad Atomic Refractor for the Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to catch a ball, though. It's pretty cutthroat, okay? Like, if <laughs> most of the time, obviously this guy in Cincinnati, well, he had pretty much the whole section to himself, more or less. But typically, it's pretty cutthroat for that kind of stuff. I mean, people will knock you right over the head and take it away from you if they get a chance. I mean, well, we've all seen the crazy stuff that fans will do lean over and try to grab it and sometimes do grab it when it's still in the field to play amongst many other things. I mean, people are nuts when it comes to getting balls. Kyle Wright to 150 for the Braves. What's that guy's name? Um, 
there's a guy that just goes around and tries to collect game baseballs from home runs or foul balls or whatever and he has a tremendous number of them uh he actually had a signed card in archives last year i think it was they gave him his own trading card and there was a signed variation of it i can't remember his name but guys like him and similar to him travel all over the place just to try to get those balls <laughs> Jupiter says if it's a cool guy that would give you some signed stuff for a nice experience, then fine. But otherwise, cash is good. <laughs> and Bryce says, for the sake of argument, if it were a Yankees ball, and he dislikes the Yankees very much, then... <laughs> That he would rather give it away than get money for it because he thinks it would be basically tainted money. <laughs> he calls it blood money in chat, to be specific. Now, see, I would think the opposite. I would think if it's a team I didn't like, my first thought would be, oh, yeah, sell it. And there's no way I'm giving it to the other team's player because I can't stand the team, you know. I would look at it as making money off of... The team that I couldn't stand. But Bryce, you look at it the exact opposite way. That's interesting. But as I said, if any of them actually came and asked for it, no matter who it was, I, I know I would give it to them. That is, that's the unfortunate downside of being raised the way I was. Yeah, we do the right thing. Even when we, even when there's money on the line and things we'd rather do we do the right thing because that's how that's how our mother taught us will smith for the dodgers atomic refractor uh yeah see jupiter you and i are on the same page if it's a team you don't like yeah make the money off of them <laughs> i think it'd be much harder to sell for a team that i do like because i would want to keep it and add it to my own collection if i liked the team myself But as I said, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it. I don't, I don't believe I'm going to be catching any home run or foul balls anytime soon. It's just so easy these days to watch the games from home. Save all the money for the tickets and the parking and the insanely marked up prices for food and beverage although i'll grant you there's nothing like the experience of being there live as long as your team is winning now being there live when they're losing is no fun at all but when they're winning pretty awesome Honestly, parking is probably as much as a ticket to the Reds games these days. <laughs> I think they, I think they price them. Um, how should I say this? Very competitively these days to try to get butts in the seat, so to speak. Um, and I expect the parking is probably as much as the game ticket, or more than in some cases. That's the way it is for UK games. I mean, well, A, UK game tickets are expensive. I'm talking basketball, not football. Um, but the basketball tickets are expensive to begin with. But, man, they really just jack you for parking these days. You might pay $20, $25 to park reasonably close to the arena to go watch the game. It's like, come on. Park there for, what, three hours maybe? <laughs> I 
Now you guys are debating if Babe Ruth suddenly uh, came back to life and hit a home run ball. <laughs> if it would be sold or given away. I love it. <laughs> Bryce says that uh, he and his family are going to a Royals-Yankees game in Kansas City. And if he were to catch an Aaron Judge hit ball at that game, he might have to rethink his position. <laughs> I would think so, my friend. I, I would think so. 225, we have a paper Paul DeYoung for the St. Louis Cardinals. A babe, you're calling it a Babe Ruth resurrection ball. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. There is our continuity card for the Chicago White Sox this time on the Bowman Sterling. Oh, hey, somebody pulled the, speaking of Babe Ruth, who is the second autograph in there? Somebody pulled the uh, cut signature dual booklet out of NT Baseball recently. And it was Babe Ruth and, gosh, who was the second signature? Mm, I don't think it was Ty Cobb, but it was somebody major. To 499 a Brendan McKay for the Tampa Bay Rays. And if I'm recalling correctly, it was a store owner, a hobby shop store owner, who had been doing breaks or whatever online and just decided... He wanted to get some baseball in the video and he didn't have hadn't sold I guess any baseball breaks so he just pulled the NT baseball off the shelf as a personal box break and that's what was in it can you even imagine Andreas Jimenez for the Mets is our autograph that's kind of an interesting signature there but but nonetheless, there it is. So, yeah, it, wasn't that some crazy good luck, though? And I, I guess the article said he had sold, uh, I don't remember, maybe eight cases or something of National Treasures Baseball since it came out. Because, I mean, obviously it came out a long time ago. came out last year. And he had whatever, however many left. And to just grab one randomly and be... For a personal box, no less, <laughs> and have it be that. I mean, my goodness, I would have just fallen over on the spot. Yeah, Jupiter, I love National Treasures anything. I love all, I love that product line for Panini. It's Frankly, I prefer it to Flawless. I like Flawless as well, and certainly Flawless has some very nice stuff in it, and I enjoy breaking both of them. But if I had to choose between the two, I would choose National Treasures most of the time. I really like that series. Of course, if Panini had the MLB license, it would be a little nicer, but still, it's uh, it's pretty pretty sweet little product. Numbered to 125 for the Padres that we were talking about earlier, there is Fernando Tatis Jr. Whoops, hang on. We had somebody stuck to the back of the Chrome card there. Ryan, you're still trying to pull any NT Calvin Johnson autos. <laughs> it's been tough on your pocketbook, you say. <laughs> or tough on your pocket. You wouldn't have said pocketbook, being a man. I said, I don't know. I said pocketbook. That's what my grandmother always called uh, her purse, her pocketbook. Um, yeah, well, that can be hard on your wallet for sure. NT is not inexpensive. I had kind of planned to open a little bit more. Of course, the price has gone up quite a bit from what it was when it came out. 
but I did buy another case recently and we opened it, but it didn't uh, do particularly well. And actually, I think I lost a couple hundred dollars on it based on what I had to pay for it. I was still, though, kind of on the fence about getting another one because I thought, eh, well, you know, maybe just one of those off nights because sometimes you have nights like that where for whatever reason people just aren't bidding and you lose money and you go on. But when I called back to see about getting another case, they had jumped the price again overnight from when I had bought the last. So I was like, okay, well, never mind. Well, baseball has been fun this year. Of course, baseball is fun every year. It's mostly tops. There's obviously some panini mixed in there, but it's mostly tops. And I love the tops products as a whole. I always enjoy doing the baseball stuff. And fairly soon we'll start getting into some of it that doesn't have a zillion base cards. I mean, all the early stuff does, you know, Series 1 and Gypsy Queen and Bowman and Archives. All that stuff has a lot of base. Heritage. Of course, we haven't done Archives yet, but we've done Heritage. But then we'll get into Finest and Tier 1 and those kinds of breaks coming up that don't have nearly as many base cards in them, museum collection, etc. Normally we would have had Inception by now, but we all know the story there. Tops keeps pushing the release date back. Maybe it'll show up uh, sometime next month. Who knows? But that's another one we can do by the full case and bust through it. <laughs> Jupiter says, hopefully they take Otani out of everything so it's not so expensive. Yeah, sadly, that is not going to happen. They announced at the beginning of the year, after Series 1, that he will be in every product through the rest of the year. He's even going to be in Heritage High Number. So even though he was in Heritage, he's also going to be in High Number. Pitching in one and batting in the other. Yeah, Ryan, I'm looking forward to Inception. I love opening Inception. There's always such good hits in it. And you can easily break the full case without it being cumbersome. It's mostly hits. There's a few base in each one, but it, it's definitely skewed towards hits. And they're very nice ones, generally. I don't think I got quite as many cases as I asked for. I think I had asked for either 10 or 12, and I maybe got like 8 or something. Uh, so we'll still have a decent number of it, not as many as I would like, but a reasonable number if Tops ever ships it. To $4.99, Jaron Kendall for the Dodgers. Yeah, and I actually even have a lot more of Series 2 ordered than I normally would because... Uh, Otani's in it, so I typically only break the jumbo in series one, series two, and update. But we'll be breaking some jumbo and some of the wax in series two, probably update as well, because some places make you buy both. Yeah, because they want to move. They want to move the 
the wax. So they say, oh, if you want to buy the jumbo, you also have to buy the wax. And then some places will let you buy just the jumbo, but they don't let you buy as much as you want. So there you go. There's always a catch. For the Phillies, our Bowman Sterling continuity is Mickey. I haven't seen Mickey in this set very much, oddly enough. Not as much as I would have expected anyway. <laughs> Ryan says everybody better stay away from his Detroit Tigers when we when it comes time for inception. He's putting the warning out now. Telling everybody better back off of the Detroit Tigers when it's time for inception. Dang it, there's that still sitting there. I, I have got to move that and set it in my office to remind me to create a listing for it. I set it right there so that I see it every night to remind me to do it. And then did I do it? No. I've got to get that done. And I see honors setting behind it. I've got to get that in the rotation too. Oh, Bryce says that he's going to, starting May 1st, he's going to take a break from breaks and sell sell through some of his stuff and get ready for Chrome and Heritage High Number and all that. Oh, yeah. And try, oh, <laughs> try for some Baker Mayfield. Oh, well, we'll have, uh, that'll be out way before, uh, way before you think for Baker Mayfield. The first... Well, gosh, we've got in maybe two weeks, we'll have Majestic, and almost every week or every other week after that, we'll have 2018 football releases coming out fast and furious. I think the first one where they're, maybe the first one where they're in their pro uniforms is going to be Elite, which will be towards the end of next month i'll have to double check the date uh, but of course they're going to be in luminance they'll be in majestic um what else there's another one between now and then to 250 for the marlins with gonzalez yeah so baker mayfield's going to be popping up pretty soon uh, majestic is not this upcoming Wednesday, which is what, the 2nd of May? It's maybe the Wednesday after that, the 9th of May, I think, is when Majestic comes out. Armenteros for the A's is our atomic refractor. And they've done a little revamp of Majestic this year, so it's not as expensive as it was last year. They've changed the number of boxes in the case from five, which was always a stupid number to have in a case, to six. And they've changed um, the configuration a little bit in, the, in what you get in the box as well. But Majestic looks to be pretty nice this year. To 150, Marcus Stroman for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I haven't seen a date yet for Origins, um, and of course, Optic is way down the road. Optic will come out uh, like December, so it's way, way far. And so is Contenders. Uh, they're both December releases, November, December releases. Um, but Origins, I can't remember Origins. What the? I, I haven't seen a date to order it yet, but I can't even remember the time frame it comes out. Maybe late summer, early fall? Isabel for the Dodgers is our uh, last autograph there. Ryan, I have two more score breaks coming. Ugh, paper stuck to the back there of our chrome. We're breaking score on Monday night and score again on Wednesday night. And that'll be the last of it. So I'm just breaking the one case of it. So we did the first break Friday night. We'll do one tomorrow night and one Wednesday night to wrap it up. And of course, just remember that uh, 
each of those breaks have a category for undrafted rookies. Now, of course, a lot of those guys have gone on and signed deals to be at mini camps or free agents or whatever when the draft was over. But if they were not drafted in that original official seven round three day draft, they will go to that undrafted rookie bidding category. There's Ozzy in a rookie of the year insert. So let's recap this. And then I will once again throw up the spreadsheet info. If anybody missed it earlier, you'll have a chance to see the uh, anticipated shipping date and that kind of stuff again. So there's Armenteros uh, in an atomic refractor, Will Smith atomic refractor, Brendan McKay Bowman Sterling continuity atomic refractor to 150. Nick Gordon Atomic, Juan Soto Atomic, and Christian Stewart Atomic. Our numbered cards, which I believe I have set them all aside, if I accidentally stacked a numbered one somewhere else, obviously if you saw it go through earlier, you're still going to get it. It would just mean I stacked it in the wrong spot. Stroman to 150, Gonzalez to 250, Kendall to 499, Tadas to what? 125. Brendan McKay to 4.99, DeYoung to 25, Wright to 150, Vlad actually should have just been in with the basic uh, unnumbered atomic refractors, and I had him in the wrong stack. Dansby to 4.99, Kingery to 250, Garcia to 25, and that is also Chrome. Ian Anderson to 4.99, Taylor Clark 4.99, Stephen Dugar 250. This guy whose name I can't say, except I can say TJ, just not the other part, to 50. Rizzo, 250. Louis Robert to 125. That's also Shimmer, Chrome and Shimmer for the White Sox. Eric Fetty to 499. And Mercado to 499. Our signatures. Soto for the Dodgers. Andreas for the Mets. Jordan Hicks, numbered to 499 for the Cardinals. Mercado for the Tampa Bay Rays. Greg Deichman for the A's. And this one is a sticker auto uh, Barreto, also for the A's on the Bowman Scouts Top 100. So that is this half of Chrome. I believe we do the back half of this on Tuesday night, if I am remembering correctly. But uh, we'll find out here in a minute. I'll throw the spreadsheet information back up. We'll first take a quick look at your anticipated shipping dates in case you happen to miss that earlier. There's that info for everything that we opened up tonight. And as always, it can be plus or minus a day. So sometimes I get it out a little earlier Occasionally something will go weird with the week and it'll go a day later, but uh, in general, that's a pretty good estimate. I do think most likely um, Bowman will get out a day earlier, but I don't want to swear to it, but I think it will. And then here are the breaks coming up for the next five days. So as you see, we do have score on Monday night as our case. Uh, there's usually one box of memorabilia stuff as well as some cases or half cases. And then Tuesday night, uh, our case is Bowman again. We've got lots of other interesting baseball to open Tuesday night too, including another case of the autograph balls, one of the triple play boxes, uh, which is a jersey, a ball, and a photo all autographed. Wednesday night is the last of the score. Thursday night will be more Bowman. Friday night will be National Treasures basketball. Uh, Saturday isn't listed yet, but it'll also be Bowman. So... That's what we're looking at in the days ahead. And once again, thanks to everyone who participated tonight. I appreciate you bidding and breaking with me, coming by to say hi and chat with me and uh, just in general checking out the break. So thanks once again. I hope I'll see you again soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.